Welcome to the Boston Art Podcast. Boston's premier art podcast. Where we talk art, culture, and philosophy. My name is Theodore Earthworms. And I am Brian Huntress. Welcome to the show. Theo is texting and ignoring me, even though we just started recording. I'm literally not. Well, I don't know why you think it would be cool to text while I'm not texting. podcasting. I'm literally not texting, and we weren't podcasting when I was texting. Well, I'll have you know that I made the whole thing up. <laughs> I'm lying. Uh, what are we doing right now? Recording. Duh. Hey, I got some. I got. I got some thoughts about interviewing people. Okay. Hit him on. Hit him. With hit him on. <laughs> hit him on me. Hit him on me. <laughs> hit him on me. Hit him on me. <laughs> um, hit me with him. I think that we've had a number of interviews. Where we've said to our our beloved guest, um, <laughs> say something along the lines of, "So maybe we could start by you telling us who you are and what you do." Yeah, and I think that that might be a terrible question. Really, I think that, that one of two things happened to the guest when you ask them that. Uh, they either are like, "You got it," and then they like go off like and say a bunch of super interesting things and talk infinitely and it's it's a great introduction or it's like it's like completely it's like a sleeping dart Mm. like you know like you just like freeze them like they're like um i mean i'm i'm a a person yeah like why is it a bad question well, I'm just kind of wondering, like, I mean, because of that I'm saying, sleeping dart option. Yeah, there are some exceptions where it makes the person. They're like, "Oh, great, yeah, I know how to do that," but I feel like there's a. I feel like those people might be in the minority. Mm. You know, but maybe most people ask that question, you know, and it's not, you know, I, I I've asked that question a whole of many times, you know. What would you propose know. as an alternative opener? I think we just need to trick people more. What? I think we need to trick them. What? Like, (laughs) I don't think we should be like, okay, so the podcast has begun. We are now recording and you, it is time for you to give us a presentation on your bio and CV and bleep, 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 bleep. Like, I think we just need to be like, yo, what up? How's it going? And just like chop it up and have fun and loosen up and then get, you know, and then try to get the, get that, get a story. Yeah. I don't know. I agree. But I think that that's still a okay question, depending on how you go into it. Because I think it's really important to the ethos of our podcast, and also just generally, to keep things as much in the words of the artist as possible. So I prefer... Like, the listener needs context on who the person we're interviewing is. And I'd rather them say it in their own words than for us to say it. Yeah. And then if it's a little stiff or if they're awkward or if we're awkward, then we can take it from there. But I feel like it's good to open with. Mm-hmm. I don't think that you should just jump right into that question, though. I think that's true. Yeah. I don't know. Because we've also had... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe this is boring. I don't know. I also say this as somebody who has listened to interviews with people or podcasts with a guest. Okay, here's an interesting question question okay <clears throat> is there a difference between a podcast guest host mm-hmm. and an interview subject because that's kind of an interesting hidden dichotomy where you can have an interviewee which is somebody who is the subject who is the the point of interest right where we're like okay let's learn all about this person's background and life and bleep bleep blah blah but yeah. then there's the alternative version of that, that like a different, you know, kind of like Wario <laughs> situation where it's like they are the subject. They're the point of interest, but they are the guest host. Interesting. Does that make sense? I feel like typically when I think of the idea of a guest host, um, that's somebody who is jumping on as an additional voice to the podcast and they're going to weigh in as much as the other hosts do in that episode, but it's not necessarily about them. They're being brought in for their expertise, not to talk about their own story. But is it possible that that 
is more interesting than their own story? Like, is it possible that bringing on, like, I'm trying, I, I wonder if I could think of just like a random example. I don't know. Like, I'm at, okay. If an artist that you admired was invited onto a show about art commentary, mm-hmm. okay, I'm, like the hypothetical is about us, but like, <laughs> and, and that, I'm, say it, just say it. Like, I'm just saying, like, imagine if, you like, would it be interesting to listen to an artist that you admired just talk about shit? Yeah. Like the hosts were just like, yeah, what do you think of, uh, blah, blah, you know, just talking about shit rather than like, I'm just saying, like, maybe the idea of trying to get people to talk about themselves a lot isn't is is is, is it can be harder versus getting people to talk about random things, whether it's funny or sincere or whatever is a is a more comforting or more interesting avenue towards getting that same person to talk about themselves and tell their story like the goal is the same yeah to get to know a person to make a good connection to hear their story and to learn something from them but doing it through the lens of their commentary on things that we prepare for them or something that could be interesting i I feel like we do a little bit of that sometimes depends on the interview but we've definitely had some where an idea like that would have improved the episode that could be true. Not implying that there are some that like were failures or something, but yeah, I don't know. Just a random thought. Is something it, that's hard yeah. to talk about, but is definitely true. Um, and I feel kind of comfortable talking about now because we've had so many episodes. I don't. I'm not like adding anybody specifically, but uh-huh. um, I feel like something that I think about a lot and talk to you about a lot off air, but wouldn't normally talk about on air is the feeling of like we are interviewers and we're doing something and honing a skill when we're having an interview episode, even though hopefully it's just coming off as a conversation to the listener. So sometimes we walk away from them and we wish that it had gone better or that we had gotten deeper or that we'd done more. And there are ways that we would have handled things differently in the past just because we've learned more as interviewers using that skill set. But it doesn't mean that the interview subject was bad or that they can't talk. It means that, You know, like like, there's a craft there that we're getting better at. That's true. Yeah, because it's not entirely fair to like if a podcast episode isn't very good to just be like, oh, the the guest sucked or something because that's not, you know. But I also don't want it to sound like I was like, oh, this episode could have been better that it's because of the subject, because if I feel like that, it's typically because of how I was feeling about how I handled it, you know. Because, you... I'm sorry, I'm just trying to take a sip of this water bottle. Dude, please don't drive with your knee to hold your tiny microphone. Just tell me and I will grab the wheel. Okay, I appreciate you stabilizing the wheel while I take a sip of water. Um, don't thank me, I'm in the car, so. Yeah, so you were kind of doing it for yourself, too. Yeah, I have it. yeah, mainly. Okay, all right, <laughs> all right. fair enough. Yeah. Um, I think that there is, like, because hmm. here's another thing an opposite side of this there are many 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 talk shows podcasts whatever shows Mm -hmm. that will get very good guests where uh they are horrible interviewers yeah and just waste an opportunity yeah and on the flip side of that like i like you said before i'm also not adding anybody we've also had some guests that were not comfortable being interviewed yeah. That were not like camera people, not center of attention people, you know, mm. people that are not the type of people to, you know, try to be on a podcast or whatever. Where, uh, you know, they weren't exactly knocking it out of the park. They were doing their best, mm. but it was still a good episode. Yeah, I was, really was like fun. those ones, honestly, because yeah. I think it's really touching when someone goes out of their comfort zone to be a part of this project. Yes. Like, it's my favorite time. Yeah, and it's really nice because I think what typically happens when we encounter somebody like that is that at the beginning of the episode, or maybe before we start recording, they tell us that they don't usually do this kind of thing or that they feel uncomfortable disclosing a lot about themselves or they're worried about people, what people will think. And by the end of it, a lot of the time, they are a lot more relaxed and we end up making like a pretty lasting connection with that person and follow them on social media or like stay in touch. 
totally. Which that is really rewarding. That's like what we're in it for. So I think that somebody does a lot of public speaking or a lot of like media project stuff. It doesn't mean as much like your first time is memorable, you know? Right. Yeah. And there's like also the fact that like, fuck, I'm losing my train. Of, um, there's also an interesting thing happening with guests where when you find somebody, when you find a story in somebody and they're not, they're kind of hesitant and you kind of had to guide them and like make them feel comfortable before they did it. Mm. That like is really profound because I said this to you when we started, but yeah, the only people that will ever try to get on our show are people who really, who really want to be on a podcast. Yeah. They're, podcast people trying to be on podcasts that's not and i'm not talking shit about those people either that's not like that's us <laughs> that's yeah but it's like a very different experience it's a self-selecting thing it's like you know if you're on like a hotel resort doing a survey and you ask everybody if they like to travel yeah as a part of the survey it's like not exactly going to be like a Nobody's going to say no. Yeah, they're all going to be like, yeah. And you're going to be like, wow, 100% of people asked, love the, tra-, you know, whatever. But <laughs> it's like, okay, fucking obviously they like to travel. You're in fucking uh, whatever. What, I don't know. We get it. it. Yeah. You're in a fucking airport hotel, dude. <laughs> no shit. They like to travel. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Something else that I think about, too, a lot when we're interviewing that I feel maybe I'll regret saying this on the air because now I'm going to be worried people will be listening for it. But um, I think that we have a habit of having really rough uh, open and closings. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Because something that we don't, I don't know, maybe this doesn't come across on our show, but we get nervous every time we have an episode, like an interview episode. It's like we're not dreading it but like we book it and we're excited and then it's like 10 minutes before we're supposed to record and we're like fuck like freaking out Uh, yeah so when you first turn on the phone like i don't do phone calls normally i'm not really a big phone call person unless i'm at work or we're doing it for the podcast me too and um yeah like i only call like my friends and like maybe my grandmother i'm a utilitarian phone user yeah so um like if i'm outside your house and i'm I'm, picking you up yeah i'm here Bye. Yeah, that's it, basically. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I did talk to my friend Alex on the phone for an hour and a half the other night, though. That was fun. That's nice. Shout out to Alex. Yeah. It was like novel. We're trying phone calls lately. It's been like that's two nice. weeks of trying phone calls. Huh. But um, <laughs> it's like an intentional act, though. But um, I don't really do them. So like calling a stranger every week, at least once a week, sometimes more than that. It's like wild. So it's anxiety inducing. And when you first they first pick up the phone, they're like, hello. It's like the first time you've heard this person's voice. It's really tempting to just be like, hey, tell us a little about yourself. Yeah. Which is like, I don't know. You got to warm up a little bit, you know? You, you do need to warm up a little bit. And then the other thing that sucks is when you're on a really good flow with somebody and things are going really well, but you've been talking for an hour and a half and you need to wind down. Like you are psychologically drained and stressed out and you want to eat or something. And then they're in the middle of saying something pretty cool and you don't really know how to indicate to them that you want to wrap up without being completely rude because you're on the phone. So then you're just like, all right, well, thanks. Bye. (laughs) Like, maybe it's not as bad as I'm picturing it, but I always feel like when we have one of those, I just feel so bad because I feel like it's abrupt. But I mean, I guess that's what our job is, is to be a time minder as well as an interviewer. I don't know. You know, one thing that I did, I'll say this publicly, but when we interviewed Christopher Zetterstrand, uh, beloved Minecraft artist. Yeah. At the end of the episode, I don't know what happened, but I just like panicked and just ended the episode. Yeah. I was just like, I was just like, all right, bye. Like, I just thought, I don't know. Like, there was more that could have been said. He was settled in and, and in for the ride. We probably could have had him for another hour and a half. Who knows? <laughs> Theo had more questions. Like, there was so much more (laughs) on the way and i was like well thanks i'm gonna go play minecraft now bye that wasn't what you did i know but i just like freaked out it was so i had so much anxiety through that interview it was an intense episode and we also didn't really we don't we don't have a zoom pro account 
So that was an issue for that episode. Yeah, we had to do the meeting, restarting the meeting, but, you know, that yeah. kind of shit. So I think we were about to time out on the meeting, and then we were like, you know what, it's fine. I was... And you just uh, were like, okay, well, bye. I was so embarrassed. It's okay. It's okay. He was such a fucking great guest. He was awesome. Yeah, that was a really and That fun was episode. so cool, because he's, like, with just some... He's literally, like, just some guy from Sweden. Like, we just had a guy from Sweden. Like, when we were talking to him, it, like, it occurred to me, I'm like... What the fuck is in Stockholm? <laughs> like, what? that's a real place. Like, what does it even look like? <laughs> like, is it just some snowy, like, Christmas town? Oh, my God. And, like, north, like, what, it, what, I don't know, whatever. But, like, it just was so, like, I was like, this is, this guy is just in a literal, on a literal different continent talking to us about his many experiences and stories and, yeah. You know, I was just like, this is literally fucking nuts, man. Yeah. The guy who made the paintings in Minecraft. That was a pretty know, exciting episode. I don't know if we've reflected on that on the on the air, but that was fucking lit. Dude. I don't think we did because we were shy, but that was like legendary. Dude, it was like I like like that like made us look so sick. It was such <laughs> an accomplishment in the most obscure, random way. You know like, what's so funny about that is yeah. that how many people that never gave a flying fuck about our podcast before came out of the woodwork, like in our personal lives, they were yeah, just they like, were like, "You interviewed what? who? That guy?" <laughs> yeah, and, and long, you know, OG fans will know that I'm like, uh, I have like a gambling addiction, but in Minecraft only. <laughs> gambling addiction and by in that, Minecraft. I mean, I'm not addicted to gambling at all, but I'm just. Uh, You're into scratch tickets. I, f- I, I fuck with scratch tickets. It's a little bit of a weird habit where like every, uh, like once, once a month or every couple months, I'll like go to a seven 11 or something and just like scratch a couple scratch tickets at nighttime. I feel guilty about this because I feel like my family created this habit in you. Yeah. It wasn't a thing you did until you started hanging out with my grampy. Yeah. Cause <laughs> for those that don't know, Theo's grampy, you know, <laughs> like none of them know. Probably. Well, he, you know, he loves a scratch ticket and like, you know, there are people, there's definitely people listening that, like, ha, you know, have a relative that gifts scratch tickets all the time, or they are that relative and buy people scratch tickets. That's a thing. Yeah. It's a reg- regular thing. Anyway, but yeah, so Theo's family, every, you know, a lot of family functions were ripping scratch, scratchers, scratchies. It's, like, increased in intensity so much in the I last, like, them. year and a half. I love them. Like, when I was growing up, it used to be, like, he would get us, like, a $5 scratch ticket on Christmas, or, like, every once in a while if we were at, like... Like, there's a Chinese food restaurant that had a scratch ticket machine in the front lobby when I was growing up near my house. And if we were there, he'd get us one because it was, like, whatever. But now it's, like, every fucking time I see him, he hands me, like, three of them. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. Maybe it's because he knows that we all, like, enjoy it so much that he's like, let's turn up. You yeah. Guys are on the, you guys are on. Well, my parents my, buy them my, for my him, too. Now. Yeah. It's like, do you ever have one of those things where it's, like, you have a family member or somebody in your life who has something extremely niche that you have in common where it's like your family just settles on this one thing to be bonding on. And it's like not the only thing, but it's just like a really weird thing. Like right now, me and my family, you're doing this too. We're watching last of us together. Last of us, yeah. It's the first show we've watched together as a family in years. And the reason we're all watching it, me and you and Noah watch stuff all the time. My brother, Noah. Yeah, so whatever. Noah. Yeah. Noah's a TV movie guy. So we watch TV and movies with him all the time. Um, my dad is a carpenter and the main character of the show is a former carpenter and they keep shouting out carpentry and I think he loves it. Noah's a carpenter too. And my mom is really into um, like mushrooms, not in like a like creepy way, like not like, not like that. You know, but mycelium like, people, people. She's just really, about. she just thinks it's nuts that they can grow like anywhere and she like really like gets mushrooms on like clothes and she got mushroom shower curtains last week. She's like really into mushrooms right now. She has been for like two years. So we found out that there was a zombie show about carpenters and mushrooms they were sold and now we that's the show we watch it's been like 10 years since we did this and now every sunday we watch last of us yeah man <laughs> and the scratch tickets are another version of that i don't know hmm. family dynamics are funny what a world <laughs> i didn't do the thing i'm thinking about what you said i didn't what? do the oh i thought you're never mind sorry i was thinking it oh okay i'm not i didn't do the back thing to you I <laughs> no, it's okay i'm sorry i was reflecting on family stuff and last of us and shit last of us is such a good show yo wait isn't that on tonight no it's on sunday oh tomorrow night yeah oh um 
You had me nervous for a second. I was like, what do you Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, speaking of weird things that, like, having in common with family, like, so on my dad's side of the family, it's a bit of, like, a quieter family connection. Yeah. Where it's, like, you know, extended family that doesn't exactly connect all the time. It's more of a Christmas and funerals type deal. Yeah. Love them all. No, like, disrespect. No bad feelings about that or anything. Yeah. But whenever I do see them all, you know, you have no idea you know, what anybody is interested in, yeah. what to talk about. But I just have one uncle who's awesome, my Uncle Gary. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who is like, a, he's basically, he's an oil painter that is like, uh, li- like within the school and style of John Singer Sargent. Yeah. Like he just like, his work looks like just like they all look like sergeant paintings. Like he's, he's really talented. He's an incredible painter, and he like uh, can talk infinitely about like classical oil painting and shit. So when you talk to him, it's just like you just like I just go to a family party on my dad's side and just talk about uh, like extremely technical oil painting information. Yeah, and it's just like yeah, I, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, he's he's a cool guy. I well, it's funny because I feel My like Aunt um, Sandy, who's also an artist, yeah, cool remaker and sculptor. I got to meet them recently, and then we had a really long art nice conversation. People, it was nice really people. fun. Shouts well, out. It's funny because I feel like that's like a stereotype that when you visit family that you don't know very well, you talk about work, and it's like yeah. <laughs> it's like when my dad goes and visits like some of his extended family, he always talks about like the addition someone's building on their house or like. He, like, talks to them about their roofing project because he does carpentry right. and framework. Oh, he redid the bathroom. Let's go check it out. Like, two yeah. men standing in a bathroom talking about, like, Yeah, because he works in the trades. And molding. But it's yeah. like you're doing the same thing, but it's oil painting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Because <laughs> he's the only person in, in my family, the only older, like, you know, person. I have some cousins that are artists, but um, he's, like, my only aunt or uncle the the two of them that are like like fine art people yeah you know like my uncle rudy for example is in the arts but he's making uh you know music documentaries and music photography and stuff that's pretty sick shout out to my uncle rudy yeah who we i uh just worked on a music video with him actually which was a really interesting experience and i actually wanted to talk about that on the podcast weirdly enough because whenever i talk to him uh, whenever I'm at a family party on that side of my family and I'm talking to him, we're talking about rock and roll 80s stuff. That's cool. S- rock, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it is. It's cool because it's his, it's his life yeah. and his experiences. And I care about his life and his experiences. But n- nobody has ever really known me as somebody who's like all about 80s <laughs> rock music. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, but... <laughs> But I like to, you know, get down with what he's talking about because he's like, you know, was like, uh, I, you know, I, he was like one of like another parent to me when I was growing up. Yeah. Like weirdly also through middle school, every single time I got in huge trouble, my mom would send me to Rudy's house (laughs) as punishment. As punishment? And literally like one time, one of the worst ones, Rudy was like redoing a part of his yard or something. And he just had a big, huge part of his yard that was just rocks and dirt. Yeah. And he made me just spend all day picking all of the rocks out of the yard. <laughs> oh my God. And that was my punishment. Cause I got like suspended from school or something. <laughs> and in between that, it would be him. Uh, you know, it would just be in- an infinite podcast of uh, like bootstrap lectures <laughs> you know in a loving way he wasn't like being a piece of shit he was just like you know like you gotta conform like get through school and like get a job or you'll be living in a van <laughs> kind of deal <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it was out of love though well and, he's right i know maybe, a lot of people who left school maybe, and went to live in a van i know so many that currently live in a live in a van that didn't go to school i wouldn't say it's a terrible decision I don't know. Yeah. I'm kind of jealous of some of those people. You know, I don't think our parents' generation anticipated that there would be, like, an apocalyptic, like, mass death pandemic. 
situation. Or a housing crisis that's yeah. been going on since we were born. And they probably didn't know that there would be like a luxury uh, resort option of living in a van down by the river. It like isn't luxury though. The bar <laughs> is just very low. Yeah, but the people on TikTok, man, they make those fucking vans look beautiful. It's still a fucking van. I don't give a shit. You're still living in a fucking van. Dude, my room is like five <laughs> times the size of what the interior of a renovated van would be like. And it's full of crap and feels claustrophobic all the time. Yeah. You can't tell me that if you don't forget to do your laundry, your van sucks. <laughs> you know it does. Also, like touring and stuff and like uh, and, and the, and the past that I've done and sleeping in the car, crashing at people's houses and stuff. Yeah. Like, dude, like the car starts to fucking smell. <laughs> like, it gets gnarly in a, in a, in a touring van. Yeah. Know? So. And I get car sick. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, uh, all the power to the, the van lifers. Shout out to van life. Here's the thing, though. If but you're a van life, I'm, I'm a van life. I don't know if I'm a van lifer. Here's know? why I get jealous of it, though. Because yeah. once you have put in all of your like overhead costs to do the renovations, you're basically just maintaining a van. Like, if you blow something in your car, you have to get it fixed or whatever. But you can live in there without having to pay monthly for a place that you're not going to own. And then when you're done, you can fucking sell it. Yeah. I guess so. I mean, I I really don't. I mean, you could sell it for something. More than you can sell a fucking apartment for. You can't sell an apartment. No, you're no, in the so. hole and then you need to cough up like $4,000 to get into a new spot. That's First, true. last, and security. This is an interesting uh, type of a... Uh, we've never really gotten into our, our thoughts and perspectives on van life and housing. We've talked about housing a lot. <laughs> show, yeah, that's true. Not on van life. Yeah, that's true. I am... Um, We're... Yeah, yeah, we uh, like you know. I'll admit it. I'll admit. I'll be the first to admit. I'll I'll participate in a little bit of van life slander, from time to time. <laughs> I mean, I respect people that 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 put it all on the line and fucking follow their dreams. That's badass. I'll slander anybody. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I just don't know about the. I simultaneously uh, like opt into respecting people by default. Like I think yeah. that most people are good, and I respect most people. But I'll also talk shit. For no reason about most people. Yeah. And Not also, a harmful yeah. way, but just like, I will point yeah. out obvious flaws. Sure, sure. And also, <laughs> I... I don't know who was talking about. I'm also... I know. I'm also <laughs> definitely, like, weary of shitting on anybody choosing, you know, some type of wacky alternative lifestyle. Because ultimately, my whole life has been a wacky alternative you know, lifestyle, like I've not really done anything though, the correct, like, you know, yeah. conventional path either on purpose or just because something was fucked up. Yeah. So it's like, I totally get it where like some people are just like, you know what? Like I just straight up am not going to get a degree right now. I can't fucking do it. I can't have a fucking job. Oh yeah. I hate everybody. I'm going to go like live in a hole. And it's like, you know what, man, I honestly get it. Dude, I was homeschooled and then became an artist, so I right. don't, whatever. There you go. I got kicked out of all the schools, went to an alternative school, failed out of college. You know, I don't know. Like it's nothing not every not everybody can just do the you know, the main A B C roadmap. But I also want to say like maybe a one eighty of what I was just saying, but it's not even about can or can't. Like you don't have to want to do that. And actually, the further into adulthood I get, the more it seems that it actually was the less profitable thing to do to try and follow that roadmap. Like, that's kind of a like relic of the past. Yeah. Dude. To do things the quote unquote right way. Unless you come from some kind of like at least an upper middle class family. Hmm. And like, I think that like, you know, I think the right path is the one that you choose. Yeah. Ultimately, no matter who you are. And I think like as long as like you're like all right here's my blanket statement generalization if you're not hurting anybody and you're not hurting yourself and you, you and you know and you're happy fucking literally be or do whatever the fuck you want yeah fuck everything if you're happy and alive fuck it but like i'm still gonna say what i'm gonna say though i'm gonna say what i'm gonna say <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Like, but, yeah. I respect you, but like, 
I don't know. Your van probably still smells bad. Your van sucks, bro. My room smells bad, though, so, you yeah. know, whatever. I smell bad right now, maybe. No, I don't. Actually. I smell good because we were going to go out. And you then do didn't... smell good. Um, Thank you. But, like, here's another <laughs> thing, too, is that when people are talking about, oh, like, you got to go to college and, like, get out there and, like, blah, blah, whatever, get an education for your future, like, those people, maybe a lot of them really mean it. And they're saying like, yeah, you got to get an education for real and get a degree and that'll help you. Sure. But I think what a lot of those people are saying, even if they don't really know they're saying this, is that you need to get out there and gain life experience. Yeah. Like you need to expand like the the fucking surface area of your brain. Yeah. Like, you know, build some new neurological pathways in your dumb fucking mind and meet people that are different than you. And realize that your world is not, you know, the size of your hometown. Well, the other thing about that's that, too. That's what that fucking means to me. The other thing about that, too, is that I do think that there is something to be said for the fact that you need to get an education. But it doesn't and, have yeah. to come from, like, the process of getting a degree isn't the only way to get an education. And I think the reason why a lot of people push their kids towards college or towards a more formal route is because some people... And I've been this person at different points in my life. Take the idea of like finding your own education or like going out in the world and seeing what there is to see as justification for falling prey to fucked up creeps who are telling you they're living in an alternative lifestyle, but really they're like 40 and don't have a license. Or like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I feel like a lot of smart, young, alternative kids wind up with like bad crowds because they don't see the limits of their perspective on the idea of what getting an education means. So a lot of people just want their kids to go to college because it's a direction. Yeah. But it's not the only direction. And those aren't the t only two. It's not a binary. There is a lot of gray area in the middle, which I kind of advise the most. But yeah. I don't know. It's kind of a... I don't have kids for a reason. And when you're, like, young and open and your, like, empathy, like, laser is, like, fucking shooting from the hip all over the place yeah no caution you don't know how to turn this fucking thing off like you can end up in some strange places i've been accused of being overly suspicious or cynical in my life but i've also avoided disaster mm. many many times because of my suspicion and caution and, and cynicism you want to play a game with me just saying what's that what if we did a thing okay. where we rapid fire, took turns, giving advice. You can't extrapolate on it. Just say a sentence. Oh, if like you were a... talking to maybe a younger version of you or like this young kid we're talking about that's not taking a traditional path and seeking alternative education through life strategies, what would you say? Okay. Are you gonna, we got to have, have questions. Like what would you say to this? What would you say to that kind of thing? Wait, what Is do you it... mean? I don't know. Like so, what? So, what's my one sentence to a young person? Like, We're gonna go I back just, and forth. We'll I take just turns. Had to hit them with a fucking dope tag. You tag? can say multiple. We're gonna take turns. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, do you want me to first? start? Go ahead. Okay. Um, this is gonna sound fucked up to you right now, but most people over the age of twenty-five don't make excuses or people acting fucked up because they have anxiety, and you shouldn't either, especially if the person you're making excuses for is over twenty-five. My advice is gonna be a little bit similar to that. And I'm going to go ahead and say that there is virtually nobody on earth that is super waste. Like there's nobody, nobody out there that is smarter and more superior than you. That's not fucking real. You will meet people. You can meet somebody who's a math PhD and there's at least one thing you know that they don't hmm. like you, like nobody's intelligence like there is no person that's just smarter than fucking everybody and knows everything and if they fucking make a call that's that and like you know what they're right my friend knows better than me that's not real that was so much more than one sentence oh well i don't know sorry <laughs> it's okay. i'm just saying because i feel like a lot of people end up in friend groups or relationships where they're like oh man like mm. you know my partner's like been through so much and they're really smart and they're a couple years older than me and like oh yeah i know or like oh yeah like my friend fucking my friend mike dude like he's been to jail like he's traveled the world like he knows what's up yeah he told me this like pe the people around you don't know shit and if you didn't find out for yourself or you didn't figure out for your fucking self 
Yeah. It's probably bullshit. I have some advice. It might be bad advice, but it's how I've lived my life at this point. Yeah, you gotta you gotta see some shit. You gotta see the shit for yourself. Don't the, fucking yeah. don't fucking listen to people and let other people make decisions for you. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. All right, what's yours? I, that's kind of what I was gonna say, actually. Oh, okay. I've made a lot of decisions in my life. Some of them were good. Some of them were bad. But they were all my decisions. Mm-hmm. I don't let anybody tell me shit. And when I was younger, that actually put me in a lot of bad situations. But I found out very quickly why. <laughs> Because I also had a lot of my life where I just did what I was told without really questioning it because it was the right thing to do. And I don't think I learned anything from that. It got me through some times where I maybe would have done something stupider than what I did do. But I didn't like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. If you're, it, maybe don't make the bad decision, but at least investigate the reason why you're not supposed to. <laughs> Inform yourself. That's good. Yeah. I got another one. Okay. Okay. You... If you, okay, (laughs) this might be a little bit controversial, right? (laughs) Okay. But planning for the, okay, how do I put this? (laughs) This is going to be a funny one, I can tell. (laughs) You cannot plan for the, you cannot bank on the fact that the apocalypse is going to happen. If you are fully fucking in on the fact that the world is going to fucking end, and that everyone's going to fucking die, and that there's no future on this earth, like, you're going to make a lot of decisions. Like, so, like, basically, if, Jesus. This is a niche one. This is a little bit neat. I'm just saying, like, I, I don't want to, I, okay, let me just to qualify. I 100% believe in climate change. We need to do something about it. The world <laughs> is fucked. The world's falling apart. There's a lot of bad shit. We need to fucking save the world. Okay. But, Dude, Agreed. you might still be here in 40 years. <laughs> you specifically yeah. are going to still be here. You're still going to be alive. You're going to need a job. You're going to need a life. Yeah. Like you can't just get drunk every day or say, fuck it. I don't give a fuck about anything because the fucking world's going to end. Yeah. What if it doesn't? <laughs> then you're just the, some asshole that didn't help. You have no skills. Or, 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 or anything because you thought everyone was going to die. And not for and anything. you just said fuck it and did acid all day or something. Not for anything also, the but fuck, I don't man. know if you've ever seen End of the World movie, but if you have just do acid every day or drink every day and the zombies come, you're fucked. <laughs> like, learn some skills for the end of the world if you want. If the, if, the fucking, if the fucking moon crashes into the earth, oh my God. there's a chance I'm going to live <laughs> and can be like some Mad Max type person. Just perma-tripping in the new Ice Age. I don't want to be, like, all <laughs> fucked up and, and, yeah, and have my brain fucking melted by whatever. All right. I'm just saying, that's, like, <laughs> that's, like, kind of, like, I feel like I know a lot of people that would be, like, hey, you know, that's reductive or, like, hey, you know, like, that's a little bit fucked up or something. Or maybe some people would think that I'm kind of being a dick saying that. But I say this as somebody, when I was 15, all right, let me say this. When I was 15... I did a lot of drugs. I had a weird fucking childhood and teenage year. You know, it was it got fucked up. It got yeah. pretty wild for me. Okay, I'm, this isn't a sob story, <laughs> but <laughs> dude, let me say this: I learned about the Illuminati, the Mayan calendar, the <laughs> apocalypse, the planets aligning, 2012, <laughs> Earth falling into the sun. I learned about all that when I was like 14 or 15. And was on drugs, and I fully fucking believed that the 2012 apocalypse was going to happen. <laughs> December 21st, 2012, the fucking world was going to end. I was <laughs> literally fully believed this. Mm. Okay? And I was like, dude, I'm literally not going to be older than 16. Oh. I'm really going to die. And everyone's going to die. Let's do acid. <laughs> <laughs> so I did a bunch of acid. And got drunk every day. That's so sad. That wasn't the only reason, obviously. <laughs> I, you know, was going through a lot of other stuff, maybe, and was doing other stuff. This is like, I'm like, I'm having a vulnerable moment. Okay? It's okay. I'm just kidding. Not really. But like, I literally fully believed that the apocalypse was coming. And obviously, I was wrong. <laughs> Obvi- you know, it obviously didn't end. Everything about all of those conspiracy theories were just harmful garbage. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I feel like I learned something from that. 
because I feel like, you know, like when I, uh, for a lot of parts of my teenage years, you know, like I played hockey. I was in a vocational school for a brief period of time. I had nice friends. Yeah. Like I had some, I had some out, I had some prospects in life. Yeah. At that time <laughs> to, to, to try to be a normal kid, but I, I don't know. The apocalypse. Well, K twelve acid. I think that specifically is a little bit niche, but I think that there's a lot of people that relate to that in another way too. Because I feel like I've heard a lot of people say things like, "I didn't expect to be older than eighteen, or like, I Same. thought like even if it wasn't like a world's gonna end thing, like a lot of people deal with not planning for. I feel like there's a kind of this is maybe really dark, <laughs> but since we're already going here. Um, I feel like I knew a lot of people and maybe I felt like this when I was a teenager that didn't understand that there's a difference between teenage depression when you're still a minor and can't control your own life circumstances and adult depression when you can take action. And it's a lot easier to be miserable and suicidal when you're also kind of helpless over the context of the things that are making you sad. Like, if you are depressed because you're 16 and you can't do the things with your life that you want to do yet because you're 16 and you're, like, not out of high school and you don't have a job and you can't, like, move to the city you want to move to or, like, get famous right now, like, <laughs> there's nothing to be done about that. You just have to age a little bit. But, and, and you don't see it like that because a couple of years is, like, a way bigger fraction of your life than it is when you're an adult. <laughs> But yeah. right now, like, if you're upset about something, like, I could move to fucking Spain tomorrow if I wanted to. It would be a really bad move, probably, financially. But, like... Maybe don't. Yeah, Maybe I'm probably could. not going to do that, but I could. Maybe. Like, I, if I could t wanted to take drastic action or do something to make my life better or go on some medication or, like, fucking... I don't know. I could do that. Uh -huh. You can't do that when you're a kid. And I think a right. lot of people I don't see, plan for when they turn 18 because the idea of taking some kind of action is really hard to grapple with when that's not possible for you yet. Yeah, dude. And like also all of like, I said this, I, I said, I made a post about this online in the past, but like, for example, like if, you know, everybody you see online that is having gallery shows or, mu or musical tours or books coming out that, for example, mm -hmm. all of those people planned those things probably six months to a year before they happened yeah right which means to me all of the best things all of the strongest projects all of the biggest splashes take months or even years of groundwork it's true which means that there's a lot of future planning and avoiding instant gratification that comes with being a, a real motherfucker with being a real player in this shit yeah right and let me just put this bluntly for the fish fuck, and uh, stick and poke cigarette people listening that are 19 or something, you will probably be a middle-aged adult. <laughs> like if you're like 19 and get drunk all the time and you smoke cigarettes and like, you're really like interesting and cool. Like you're going to be 30 and that's fine. That's actually ideal. That's like yeah, the best case scenario. You're gonna, you're going to get up there, man. And that's, I'm 27 right now. There's 30's probably, not old. There's Fuck probably off. some people listening right now that are a lot older than, than me and you. But, like, I know that I'm still young in the grand scheme of things. I'll be young when I'm 40. But, I guess... Your brain, like, just developed, like, last year. No, it didn't. Yeah. It developed a couple years ago. <laughs> but I'm just saying that, like, there's a lot of people that are, that are, you know, there's a big difference between 19 and 27. And when I was 19, I thought that I was going to be, like, dead or something. I'd be like, yeah. oh, fuck, I'm, I'll never be that old. I will die. 100% will die before that happens. <laughs> like, why would that why? happen? Why? I don't know. <laughs> but now, I like, it. Would, it it's, it's inconceivably devastating to imagine somebody that age being, you know. Yeah. You know, lo losing uh, their why life. Why are you weeping? There's a person laying on their horn. For yeah, what reason? That really fucked up the vibe. We're at a red light. Like, what's your problem? I don't know. Fuck him. But, like, yeah. Like, it's... I... What the fuck? Eat a bag of shit. It's not even us that they're beeping at. Do they know <laughs> them or something? I don't know. The people in that car are laughing, but do they just... Is that an angry guy or something? 
anyway, they're they're. Do they know each other? Is it a joke? Uh, no. no. That looks like a road rage situation. What a douchebag! We were at a red light at a highway on ramp. Like, Aggress- what is he gonna do? Aggressive road rage situation. Uh, aggressive competitive driving style, as the state of Massachusetts would put it. Um, I appreciate the vibes of the couple in that car that were just openly laughing at the person beeping, though. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think that the theme of our our advice of the last like fifteen minutes is that have a long game. Have have a long game. At least at least have an abstract, loose long game. Mm. Like you don't have to plan this shit out to the T. Like you know what I mean. Like you can you can leave some blank spaces and and chance, but just like remember that life is good and 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 long and there's there's an infinite world out there for you to see. You know. Yeah. I feel like we're like making like a like a mental health advocacy episode right now, yeah. but. Yeah, I think that, like, I mean, I think I knew a lot of kids in high school and college that were the complete opposite of what we were talking about. And they were, like, very, you know, they had very good guidance and they're, like, really proactive and making tons of plans. And they were, like, really conscientious and shit. And they did great. Yeah. I know a lot of people like that. And they they killed it. And they knew what they wanted and where to go. And they had people that believed in them hyping them up and pointing in the right directions and so that's and the thing though did great good for them that's the thing though i think that that's something that is interesting to talk about because that that's what you want that's like the ideal for Definitely. somebody that's in that age group to have that so i'm not saying this in like a shitty way but it's a privilege to have people in your life that want you to succeed and that understand the path to succeeding well enough to guide you down it not everybody has that. Even if you have people that are in your corner, they might not know how to do the thing that you want to do, especially if you're pursuing the arts. This That's really interesting that you say that because I have a strange sense of deja vu that we have ha- talked about this on the podcast before. We probably have. Like you're talking about the idea that if you, you know, if you want to be a welder mm. while you're in high school, there's probably many people available to you. They yeah. know exactly how you can do that, where to go. They can get you an apprenticeship. They can get you a job at, like, their friend's shop. Yeah. Like, it's a very accessible, like, good path to take. Good and useful and accessible. Yeah. We you have know? talked about this before. Yeah. But if you want, you know, like, if you want to be a, a fucking ballet dancer. Yeah. You're, you know, you're, you might be in trouble if you're, like, living in a working class town with like parents that yeah you know like you're not even just that though know. if it's something niche like that like if we in 10 years well, assuming we were like financially stable and whatever if we had a kid we're like deep in the arts world but if my daughter wanted to be a ballerina or if my son wanted to do that not to gender it like i, I wouldn't know what the fuck to do i put you in random dancing school and hope you figure it out i do my best to google it but like I'm, i don't know anything about that specific world and that's the thing is i, I feel like a lot of people what you hope is that you have adults in your life that understand that about themselves, understand that about whatever market you're going into and know enough to guide you towards understanding that and seeking out adults that give you, will be able to give you the guidance and the skills to be able to figure out whatever field you're entering. Mm -hmm. But not everybody has that. And when you're like 19, 20, 21 and you're going to art school or whatever, like there's this like high that art school comes with of trying to be the most alternative, like enjoying the experience, like perks of being a wallflower style school. And Mm -hmm. that maybe doesn't always jive with like doing your homework and going to office hours and networking with your professors. And (laughs) sometimes people that don't have that kind of backing or people in their lives that are like, Hey, don't fucking forget about doing X, Y, and Z. It's not just about your grades. Or oh, like, I see, I see. do you know what I mean? Like there's a certain kind of savviness that maybe not everybody has yeah. access to. And it doesn't necessarily mean that people in your life aren't supportive. It might like, I think it's a class issue sometimes yeah. that they don't know how to advise you or nobody's thinking about it and you're not told and you're not old enough to know. And then by the time that you realize you missed out, there are people that are ahead of you because they did have that guidance. And it, that doesn't mean you can't make up that ground. Cause I feel like I resonate with this story a bit. 
Um, I also was very hard headed as a kid. So there could have been people that tried to tell me and I didn't listen, but I don't know. I just, I think that it's interesting to reflect on that because it really is impossible to compare yourself to other people because the people that do have that backing and that support deserve it and they should have it and everybody should have it, but everybody doesn't. And to touch on a few other things you said too, as far as like guidance and people in your life advising you and you feeling like, you know, you saying that if your kid wanted to be a ballerina, you would be like, I don't know. Mm. I, I actually kind of disagree with that a little bit because I think that our world and the world of future children is so much like people always say, oh, the world's so much smaller now or whatever. But like our world is so much fucking bigger yeah. than like our parents. And like, you know, like when my grandparents were like young people. There was probably like three options. Like they're like my when my parents, you know, when my dad was like a young man, like it was like join the military, become or become a welder, or be a carpenter, mm. or be a cop. I don't know, like become a doctor. Like there was like very like there's like you know like one page of, of possibilities or like you know or there's this like boomer old idea that like if you comb your hair and you put on a collared shirt and you get all A's, you'll do great. Yeah. Like, you'll make it. You'll you'll get up there in life or whatever. But, like, that shit... What am I... I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like, I feel like if we... Like, I feel like if we did have a kid right now and they did have some absolutely, like, wild niche, like, prospect or dream that they wanted to get involved with, we would be more equipped than anybody. <laughs> to figure out what they what they wanted like a parent in 2023 like dude i've literally met people i met i won't say their the person's name because it might be like i'm probably gonna get weird of, of, or like i don't know but like i literally met a fucking guy one time who is like 45 yeah he's like a young dad a young hip tattoo barber culture dad uh-huh who had a daughter that was literally a fucking like on the verge of being a professional skateboarder. That's cool. Who she was like 15 fucking flying through the air on vert ramps, like doing like competitions, like like real, like in the fucking game. That's sick. And and but the thing is is that like she deserves the credit because she has this amazing skill and puts in so much work and is like killing it and shit. You know, because she's probably passionate about skateboarding. And, you know, whatever. Yeah. But also, this dad was, like, probably playing pro skater, one, like, you know, no, Tony Hawk games in 1998. Probably, like, grew up with PJ Ladd. Or, like, you know, his friend, like, owns a fucking skate shop. Like, this is a guy that grew up through the 90s and 2000s with infinite connections. Knows all about skateboarding. Knows, and, and he, like... Like, like when we were kids, like, yeah, like your parents would not even have the slightest idea uh, my, my parents, too. I'm not talking about your parents, but like wouldn't have the slightest idea of where to look if your kid wanted to become a professional athlete in an alternative sport. Mm. Like, that's an absurd notion. Yeah. But there are people right now. Like, if I had a child that was passionate about skateboarding and was killing it, I would probably even know what to do. I would know where to put that kid. Yeah. I would know who to introduce that kid to. I would know how to, I would probably, I don't know, I'm talking out my ass. But like, that's a different world than growing up in a small town, working class parents, and they're like, you, maybe you could be a doctor. Yeah. Or like, maybe you could be a carpenter. Like, you could apprentice for your uncle. It's very, it's just different. I don't know. Yeah. I just went on like such a long tangent. I don't even know if I agree with myself just now. I don't know. Like, I think that I I see your point and I do agree with it, but maybe this is a little hard to um, extrapolate out because I feel like maybe art is a little bit harder to talk about in that way because there are people that I know that are artists that I grew up with that don't do the kind of things that I do for my career. And I didn't know that the things that I was doing were possible because it was like my path, I guess. And like, I had to identify what I wanted and get out there and meet the people that would help me do it because they weren't people I knew yet. And I guess that's true for a lot of people in a lot of fields, but maybe not more common ones. But it is true, I guess, more, I don't know. Maybe art is a difficult thing to extrapolate out like this because it's not like there's one way to go about it. 
Yeah. Like, it's not about fame, really. There's a lot of different versions of success. Yeah. And I won't say too much controversial shit because I don't know enough about this or this could be an episode on its own. But we find more and more all the time that the art world is similar, has a similar in, invisible etiquette, an invisible set of rules, almost like Gilded Age high society type things, where if you don't know like that you're supposed to wear this hat on this fucking day in the park or like, I don't know, like, yeah. or like you can't invite yourself to something. You have to be invited by the lady of the house. And like, it's like, what? well, you know, how high society and like old America, like, yeah, like there were like very like rules of etiquette and dining and socialite. Like it was like this, mm. it was like a culture of uh, that kept, kept it insulated and yeah. kept the rich people in. And if you didn't know the rules, you looked gauche or stupid and everyone knew that you were not a part of this thing. Like you did not have the abstract, weird, you know, information mm. that that uh, I feel you look uh, quizzical. Like you, I don't know. Well, you, what do you mean? Well, I'm just saying. I'm sorry. Like <laughs> I feel self conscious because I feel I I want to like I feel like this is a delicate topic, but like I just I just think that especially with art. You know, in the art world, there's a kind of decorum and mm. way of doing things that nobody promotes. Nobody promotes that information. And that's the and thing, puts too. That out there and it also depends on what people. part of the art world you're in. Yeah. Like, that's not necessarily true for, like, well, I don't know. Maybe it's a different set of rules for each subset. But, like, the kind of people that you're going to encounter and the kind of, like, etiquette that comes with the trade if you're doing like resin countertops like custom countertop installation or if you're making like custom wallpaper and installing it or selling that or if you are somebody that makes like calendars and bookmarks and things like that that's different too or if you are doing like the market circuit or you're making like shirts for bands or you're working on commission as a screen printer or like it's all completely different do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then there's also like the gallery circuit and then there's the museum circuit. And then there's like, like there's a lot of different subsets. Like if you just say, I want to be an artist, it's like, okay. And then what? It's That's like, like saying you want to be a writer or it's a like, scientist. Yeah. Like what does that fucking mean? That's right. a genre. That's not like a job. <laughs> That's a good, that's a good way of putting it. And yeah. I don't think that a lot of people like, maybe this is just our experience. Like, Maybe it's different depending on, like, the class that you grew up in or, like, how old you are or where you're from or whatever. But for a lot of people that I know, even just saying I want to be an artist and having that be your only thing was crazy enough. Like, even touching that genre was like, all right, go off. Like, we support you. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Like, everyone just thought you were, like, gay or something. <laughs> what? I'm just, I'm just early 2000s. Joke. I mean, I am, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's something wrong with your son. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's fucking, it's such a strange world because it relates so much to real life working class, you know, like just being a fucking person with a trade and, and also is so alien to it as well. Yeah, it's you know? interesting. It's, it is interesting. I think some I've had thoughts about this before. Maybe I'm just talking out of my ass because I guess I literally am. But hey, that's what we I, do. <laughs> I wonder if there is something to that because I think um, what I've encountered in my life is that people that are in the trades, because I come from a family where a lot of people are in the trades, there is a pride to it, and there's a hard, like there's a hardworking, humble ethos that that pride comes from, and I think that there's like not very much that's humble about being an artist at least in the way that people see that like it's like more self-centered and like you have to have kind of an audacity to decide to be a painter where if you're deciding to be like a house painter that's hard work mm. and it's humble work you know what i mean mm. there's something kind of uh yeah there's it's kind of interesting because i think that is like a a, a very like Mm, actually maybe it's a very new england thing maybe well, that's it's, not even true it's a new england thing because a lot of people would refer to that as like a protestant work ethic because like one thing i'm gonna this is like complete bullshit armchair like 
religious history, theology. Okay. But with, so, I mean, take it with a grain of salt, but with, <laughs> like, with like a big part of the Protestant movement was the abandoning of what a lot of people considered disgusting displays of wealth mm. and, you know, like these absurd, like gold, like decadent churches and paintings and robes and chalices and they were like fuck all that like this is an affront to god yeah like we need to have just a basic ass meager brown loincloth ass i don't know you know like this like we need to just be hard-working quiet salt of the earth god-fearing people mm. you know and that was kind of like this like I just expressed like a very anti-Catholic sentiment and everything I just said. And I, <laughs> as a Catholic person, I don't know. I don't know. I, I would absolutely not comment on the Catholic versus Protestant world problem, but like, I don't know. I almost want to cut everything I just said, but like, you know, like that, I think that's where it kind of comes from that idea. Like where, like you're talking about audacity yeah. and wanting to be an artist versus like just being like hey like dude get a job like the rest of us yeah you know like make your fucking money like get, get a nice place to live have some kids and be a normal person that's the right thing to do that's what god wants you to do probably yeah you know and maybe nobody even if people don't believe in god that is a, a cultural value in a lot of ways i think that's been in our blood for fucking forever it's so you funny know, though many, it's like... long before our fucking grandparents were born yeah it's funny it's interesting that you say that actually because i'm i wasn't raised protestant but on my dad's side of the family my family has been um carpenters and protestant for like generations mm. like really really far back um so i feel like that is pretty ingrained in like my like my family traumas probably yeah <laughs> but um it's in your, in your it's in your bones i had a conversation with a family member um last year that i've definitely told you about and i'm not gonna say who it was because they're not it's, it makes them oh, sound kind of shitty and it felt kind of shitty to me <laughs> but it wasn't what they meant yeah. i don't know it was, it was a weird moment Lay it on but me. they were like we were having this long conversation i was talking about like i moved home like two years ago to save up some money so that we can move into the city and like really invest in the podcast and stuff yeah. and also because like rent was really high and i wasn't in school anymore and there was no reason to be paying for the city when everything was on lockdown yeah so it was a ghost town yeah Nothing. so i did that and i think it like a lot of my family including family members that i didn't talk to very much before this like came out of the woodwork to be like it's gonna be fine and i was like thanks but the, uh, like not a necessary pep talk but i appreciate it <laughs> like it was i don't know it was kind of weird so i was having a lot of conversations like that with like extended family members and stuff like randomly at holidays and um someone came up to me and they were like i think that you have an incredible work ethic and um the stuff that you do is amazing and i'm really excited for you for this next chapter in your life like i think you're doing really good and i was like that means so much to me like thank you so much and then they were like, as soon as you pick a career, you're going to be fine. This was like last year. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and they meant it. And they were serious. And they were like hey, tearing yo. up and hugging me. And I was like, as soon you know as what? you figure out what, you know, whatever it is, whatever the fuck it is you're thinking you're going to do. Did you know I illustrated my first children's book when I was 13? Yeah. I was like, thanks, dude. What a like, sweet kid you were. It would be. Isn't, isn't that stupid? Isn't that book like still like on Amazon? Or oh, my something? God. Yeah. We, we don't have to like plug it, but like there's it, multiple. It would be kind of it would honestly be really cool to get a copy of that. Oh, wouldn't that be so cool for the podcast? If we bought a copy of it <laughs> on Amazon and and fucking like looked through it and reviewed it on the show. Oh, and, my like, God. Reflected on your life during when you were whenever you did that. There are sweet. Oh, I want to do that. I'll buy it if it if it's available if it's a thing to do. I don't know if they would be available because one of them was a book that the person self published and had me illustrate. That was the one I did when I was younger, I think. And um, it was for their kids who were adults now. Um, and it was on Amazon for a little while, but then it was not listed anymore. But then you could still get used copies, which was interesting. You know, I distinct, I remember you telling me about this during OG quarantine mm -hmm. and I remember looking it up and finding it. It's the listing is still up, but I don't know if you can actually buy anything. Uh, oh, it um, might like be like a sold out. Like, I oh, think I've it's like a ghost like listing. Out of stock listing or whatever yeah. the fuck. 
But then the other before. one, I don't know if you can buy because I don't know who owns the rights to the book because the author actually has passed away since I did uh, that. Well, rest in peace. Yeah, she was really nice. Oh, um, I think you told me about that before. Yeah, that one, I we wrapped it up. I started illustrating it when I was 15 and it got published when I was 17. Um, yeah. But yeah, so in other words, you've known what you're doing with your life for your whole life. Yeah, there's never been a time okay. that I didn't want to be an artist. <laughs> just, to bring it, just to bring it back. And around, this person you know. knew that. They've known it the whole time, yeah. but they just didn't see that as like a possibility. Like they thought that me moving home was me being like, all right, I'm going to hang up this bullshit. Like time to buckle down and get serious. When it was really like, I'm just, I, it's the fucking pandemic. Like I don't need to be paying $2,000 a month to live in the city for no reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Purely and like, it's, I don't know. It's funny too, because it literally is the exact same thing where it's like, you know, like my parents, like I've pretty much just, it's funny. My parents have no idea what I'm doing yeah with like they but I'm I'm very fortunate in the sense that they're just like you know hey knock yourself out <laughs> whatever makes you happy like they're supportive in a way where they don't get it at all yeah but they're like woohoo like like I hope it works out <laughs> yeah <laughs> cuz like my parents you know as I've mentioned before I had you know a troubled you know teenage years so i think my parents just became happy with the 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 fact that i was just gonna be happy and safe yeah and not on drugs or something <laughs> so that you know just the idea that i'm would just do whatever and be happy and have a, no a normal life yeah is like uh, you know <laughs> is enough and i think that should be enough for everybody really that's a really nice thing, honestly. I, yeah, I think that's a gift my parents gave me a long time ago that I didn't really know they gave me. Because mm. I used to just think I was just some, like, outcasted black sheep idiot and nobody gets me, you know, and nobody understands what I'm doing with my life. And it's like that was only a – there was only a grain of truth in that. Yeah. Where it's like they don't get it because of their background and because of the, I'm doing a weird thing. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with them not getting it. They're not like trying to persecute me yeah. or make fun of me. They're just like, whatever. Yeah. Like, if I was trying to be a fucking rocket scientist, they probably wouldn't get that either. Yeah. And that's not because they're stupid, like hokey backwoods people or something. They're just normal fucking people. And here's the thing, too, though. <laughs> you know? Like, I don't. I don't know. Like, even if you have like a quote unquote normal job. Yeah. Like, for example, your sister is an architect. She is. Do you know Shout what she does Jill. every day? Like, what her job actually is? Honestly, no. <laughs> I really don't. Like, I just think that she, like, looks at plans and, like, sends emails. <laughs> do you know what I do every day? Do you know what my job is? A little bit. <laughs> Nobody Not knows what anybody does, Not dude. Completely. It's, I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. And especially if you pick something, like, niche to do, it's, like, at a certain point, yeah. like, I'm not trying to say, like, people have to get over themselves, but, like, I think that was kind of my arc with it, is, like... People need to get over themselves. Yeah, like, who gives a shit if Just nobody knows what you're up. doing? If the people in your life don't know what you're doing, either tell them or stop worrying about it. And obviously, this is different. Like, we're obviously not talking to the people in the audience who are dealing with, like, some, like, very, like, toxic and awful situation yeah because there are people who are dealing with this person's pulling over are uh, you pulling over no it was a cop with his lights on that seems to have turned them off oh. and is not pulling anyone over now that's odd okay that was a little bit of... for context for the listener we were driving and there was some blue lights appearing behind us that have since went away that's very odd. Anywho, but I'm just saying, I just, I feel like that could be misinterpreted in a way as somebody being like, well, like I'm in this absolutely untenable, unacceptable situation. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, we're not telling you to sh suck it up. <laughs> loser. Yeah, no, no, like, no. We're no. not talking to you. We're talking to the other people. Yeah. We're sorry that you're there. Anyway. And that's kind of the thing, too, is like, not to get pretty dark about it, but yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe that strikes a personal chord with me because I think that without getting into it too much, there are people that have 
like everybody's situation is relative and everybody's pain in their relationship to their families are relative and i get that yeah but there are people that have authentically fucked up families that yes. don't want them to succeed yes and just don't put yourself in that pot if you're not in it you know what i mean oh i see what you mean like if you That's can tough but like i, I agree and I only identify that, claim that if it if it feels like it resonates with you. Like I'm not that's not a blanket statement for everybody, obviously. But sometimes sometimes maybe when you've chosen an alternative path, you're walking it in a way that is harder than it needs to be. Mm, bold words and I agree. Yeah. Bold words that I agree with. Like just because someone doesn't get it doesn't mean they hate you. But if someone does hate you, fuck them. You know what Fuck I mean? Fuck them. <laughs> yes. And do whatever you need to do about that. As long as it's legal. I don't know. <laughs> as long as it's legal. <laughs> well, there are a lot of fucking awful things that are legal. It's not my business. I don't know. I'm not a cop. <laughs> anyway, we're just kidding. Well, um, where do we go from here? I don't know. This is a weird episode. What are we talking about? I don't know, but I didn't really expect any topic that we covered to be covered. Me neither. Wow. Whatever. Um, yo, this is completely unrelated, but Hit me. Um, I was listening to old episodes recently. Oh, hell yeah. And some feedback that we actually got from Trevor. Shout out shout to out the to homie. Trevor. It's been a while since we've shouted out Trevor. Yeah, it's been a few weeks. Um, You're the shit, dog. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, but he said when we got the new mics, we were like, how do the mics sound? He messaged us and was like, it's a very big improvement because you could never hear Theo's voice as loud as Brian's. Yeah. And I was listening to the old episodes, dude, and it sounds like I'm like 30 feet away from you. It's just me being like, blah, 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 and like you just faintly in the background. Yeah, literally. You couldn't even hear wow, half of what I said I'm a lot of the time. A fucking idiot. I was listening to like season one, though. So we were in the car yeah. and you were probably holding the phone. But <sighs> I'm like embarrassed of like some of our, some, there are like, there are some episodes out there that like I just am ashamed of my, of being oh. the producer of them. Really? Well, just some quality, like, where it's just, like, we interviewed somebody and, like, you couldn't even fucking hear anything they said. Or, oh. like, or you sound like a ghost in another room yelling. Like, it's <laughs> like, what am I doing, man? Well, listen, you can't put all that on you. <laughs> like, we are also working with a non-existent budget. Yeah, that's Which, true. Speaking of that, yeah, do we want to make an announcement right now? Yeah. Don't be a bitch. Let's I mean, do it. Uh, yeah, I guess. Fuck it. I mean, we're launching a Patreon. We are. We're launching a Patreon. The plan was to launch it uh, at episode 100. I guess that we could still do that, even though this will probably be episode 96 or 97. Yeah. But episode 100, we will be dropping our Patreon where we will be hosting a patron-only podcast. A teeny little secret one. Yes. They will not be episodes as long as these ones, but they will be good content mm. nonetheless. We're yeah. going in. We're doing this. We're asking for your support. And our campaigning and promotion of that, that Patreon will be, uh, will be coming. And we have mm. a, a lot of additional planning to do before we get into that. But this is a treat for all of the listeners that... Uh, uh, been uh, are still here listening to the end of the episode. Yeah. So this is like, we won't tell anybody. We don't tell any of the people that stopped listening at 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this is for you guys only. Well, we <laughs> have been talking about doing this for a while, and I think it's important for us to do, or we feel like it is at this point, because we are at a crossroads of the podcast where we've been having so many wonderful conversations with other artists, but we also used to record so many more episodes with just the two of us and there's just not enough time in the day to record an hour and a half of both every week and we want to still be keeping up with you guys and be providing like documentation of the stuff that we've been up to like discussing things between the two of us getting into stuff that we're doing in our careers and be doing this coverage of artists in boston so to make sure that we have content that is interesting and engaging for the people that are listening to get to know us a little bit better and to hear our thoughts as well as our guests, this is a little bit extra so that you can kind of hear some things that are on our minds. And we're going to try to do like 20, 30 minutes 
I don't know how often, but there's um, there's going to be uploads weekly of at least like some photos or some writing or something. So there's a little sample of more of us if you want it. I appreciate that statement, but I, I think that it would be, I think that we're probably what's going to happen as long as the Patreon gets a good launch mm. and, you know, we get some people right off the bat. You know, I think that I, as long, if it's going strong, I think that we could do an additional mini episode for the Patre Patreon only. Weekly? Uh, weekly, yeah. I think we could do All right. that. I didn't want to commit to that on air because you were nervous about it, but I was planning it. on doing that. But look, here's the thing, guys. <laughs> Full transparency. If our Patreon fucking bombs and like only one person signs up, you know, it might you know, and it doesn't work out, maybe there won't be a weekly mini episode. I don't know. That's mm. actually stupid to say. Yeah, I don't agree with you. All right. Well, fuck me. <laughs> I'm going to do it if you're not going to do it. We're fucking doing it. I've been trying to convince Brian to do this for like weeks. I'm, I'm just really, I'm, I am very self-skeptical. I don't I'm riding to. for you guys, letting you know. I'm trying to make the Patreon happen. Yeah. This I'm is, responsible for the bonus content. This is the, uh, well, no, you're, you're, it's not all on you. I have to pee no, I, it guys. is. It is. I'm claiming it. Oh, okay. It's my fucking what if Patreon. I want to claim on it. Claim it. You clearly don't. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good one. Touche. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. if you want to claim it, Brian? You know what I really want to do? Are we just getting reckless with public ideas on the end of the podcast? I don't know. Because I really want to. I love say? the idea of making. Uh, what's wrong? I just realized I want to go to Bova's. Dude. We are not near the north end of Boston right now. I'm so hungry for cake. Well, there's a, definitely a grocery store around here Ugh. that's still open. We'll check it out. They might have a cake. Like a stop and shop Dude, cake? You want a piece of chocolate cake. That's hard to fuck up. It's very easy to fuck up. All right. Shout out to Boba's. Uh, I love Italy. I love Italians. I love the north end. But the, it's fucking cake, dude. Boba's. You offend me. I'm not saying let's go buy a lobster tail from a fucking random place. You can fuck that up. You can fuck up cake so easily. Have you ever been to a fucking birthday party? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but tonight... Is... I'm just as Italian as anybody else on the Soul Shore is. No, you're not. When I say I'm just as Italian as any random white person on the South Shore, I mean I'm not fucking Italian. I'm more Italian than you. You are. Liter objectively true. Literally. That's not even a problem. Clearly. Because it's... <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, I have to pee so bad. Yeah, let's go get you some fucking cake somewhere. I want to. Wait, what were you going to say, Maybe though? Maybe I'll buy ice cream. I derailed your oh, reveal. Oh, 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 Wait, oh. ice cream, really? Yeah, we got ice cream. Fuck yeah, let's go to Target. Okay, right, we'll tell me what you're going to say, though. Target might be close. Oh, but we already have chocolate ice cream. At home. Oh my God. Relax. We're, we're, <laughs> we're going to eat something. No, okay? I have chocolate ice cream at home. So we can just go home. Dude, but, but I, I don't have want... any. Oh my God. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I'm just kidding. Um, no, but I was just going to say, I really need an excuse and a direction for making regular video content. Yeah. Because also, this is a shout out only for the end of the episode listeners. The real ones. Only the real ones only. But I make a YouTube video every Wednesday now. Fuck and, yeah. And I'm going to have a video posted. So I've been doing it since January. But my goal, one of my 2023 resolutions is to post 52 YouTube videos. Fuck yeah. One a week, the whole year, every Wednesday. Uh, but those are just... Those aren't, those are pointless. They're just me talking. It's not like a, any kind of documentarian type deal. How long are they? Uh, like three minutes to 10 minutes. Nice. Any range, whatever. But like, I would really love to make video documentaries. Yeah. Or short form video. Oh, I would love about that. Artists, you know, cause there's like, you know what I've been thinking, Theo? What? Here's another weird idea for the end of the show. Okay. All right. There's a lot of people. Okay. Here's the thing. Our specialty is finding people to talk to for one to two hours, right? Yeah. We're Weird looking, hobby, but yeah. We're looking for people to talk to for a long ass time. Yeah. But there's a lot of people out there, <coughs> a lot of interesting people out there that are completely not willing to do that. That's true. But there's a massive market 
of journalistic subjects that are just as interesting as those one to two hour people that would that would be willing to talk for five minutes for 10 minutes people who would be like a bang pow boom like quick rapid fire questions on a video type deal okay there's people out there and i think that that's an untapped journalistic you know gonzo independent journalism situation okay i'm just saying like there's a lot of a lot of musicians showgoers organizers artists you know that aren't that aren't about that life they don't want to be on a podcast for fucking two hours Hmm. they might just want to chop it up for fucking 10 minutes on a video yeah am i making sense i don't know you are maybe that's a work maybe that's a world we get into you know, I, I guess mean, I'd dabble in that. That doesn't honestly appeal to me as much as the other stuff that we do, but I agree. maybe me I would too. change my mind. Me too, but I don't know. I mean... Depends on the setting. You you just you just never know. You yeah. just never know, man. Could be fun. Yeah. I really like the idea of doing video documentary stuff. And, I mean, throwing a random idea out there, see how people respond to this or if we're going to do it, and maybe edit it out if you decide we don't want to do it. But um, I think that it could be interesting for us to collect video from the in-person studio visits that we do so that we could put them on the Patreon. And that could be like a secret content thing for people. And maybe eventually, if we've been doing it for a while, we could roll those into like a little short video or something. And the Patreon subscribers could get early access to that stuff. And maybe we wouldn't turn it into anything and they'd get the only access to it. Or maybe we just have this archive that we're building. Yeah. You know what I was thinking would be cool, too, that would be, like, insane would be to uh, let people see unaired episodes. Mm, Yeah. Just shit that we didn't post. Just a collection of us fighting. I have to pee so bad. Well, we, one of our worst episodes, one of our worst, most tense episodes, we posted. Which one? The one, Theo versus Brian deathmatch, where we basically just had, like, an unproductive, intense conversation. For an entire episode, and we were kind of mad at each other. I do remember but that. Then we like worked it out in the end, and like I don't know, it was kind of funny. And then we recorded like a prologue to the episode. And we're like, we're not really fighting. Yeah, we're like, hey, I do remember that actually. We're sorry. We just like, <laughs> I don't. That was such a. Funny Is that the time that we got in another fight after? Because then you made the fight poster for the cover of the episode. And you picked a fucking horrible picture of me where I looked like death. I like can't believe that because like, you know. I don't know. I'll say, can I have like a guy moment real quick? I'm going to have a guy <laughs> moment. Okay. Okay. This is going to be a, this is going to be a moment for me. Ready? All right. This is to all of the, the boyfriends in the audience. I fucking literally have no fucking, I, I can never fucking tell if a, a photo of you is one that you think is bad. Dog. Like picture- I just see a photo of you. That's a photo of my, my girlfriend, my partner. I'm like, what a nice picture. I post it, and you're like, you are you like fucking, fucking dumb? Go-. You're like, I look like Gollum in that, or something. And I'm like, I thought it was nice. You're so, you know what the photo was? You know what the fucking photo was? I don't know if anybody's <laughs> seen the TikTok that I made last summer with Brian, where I pretended to be Brian, and I was wearing like a tank top and shorts, and I had my hair in like the messiest top knot on purpose as a cute. joke. And I was wearing orange sunglasses. <laughs> And I'm blinking and my mouth is open. It's a still from a video. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? I thought it was nice. If I'm blinking, it's a no. That's basic. You looked great. You picked a picture of you where you look fine. See, I don't think that I we did. We did a professional photo shoot. You could have used one of those pictures. They weren't. The used wrong. a screenshot from TikTok. <laughs> Come on, Brian. I think that that, uh, that, that episode might have been pre-Ed Newt interview. Even so. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Whatever. No. I'm just saying, I think there might be some people in the audience that relate that are like, yeah, man, I can never fucking take. I don't know. No. I suck at taking pictures of my girlfriend. TM. But you weren't I'm, taking a photo of me. For, for, you were, you could have okay. pulled from my Instagram. Also, disclaimer, I'm being completely facetious and being an asshole right now. I didn't mean to post a bad picture of you. I thought it was a f- completely fine picture. And I'm mostly kidding. I believe that you I'm didn't kind of do it on purpose. I, I don't think that you did it I on purpose. I would never post a bad photo I know, photo I know, I know, I know. Purpose. I know, I know. I, I don't think that you did. I didn't like, even I think that I was actually mad. I would never embarrass you with some crappy photo. Well. On per- like, I would never <laughs> be like, 
oh, look at this ugly picture. Like, I'm going to embarrass Theo. Like, I know, I know. Never. Not my sense of humor at all. That would be grounds for a breakup. I would yeah, literally like end things over like that. Not, that's not really fair play in my eyes. Yeah, that's foul. But, but I mean, I, like, you know, sometimes I, I'm like, oh, what a nice picture. And you're like, nope, take it again. <laughs> Nope. Well, a lot of the time when you do that, though, I feel like you're being a little hard on yourself because sometimes there are pictures where I can see why you think it's cute, but I look stupid. Like, I just look dumb. There's also such a big difference between looking cute and looking good. Yeah, I want to look you know? hot in yeah, photos I'm taking. I don't always want to look cute. Like, you take a lot of cute photos of me where I'm, like, yeah. making some, like, dumb face or I have, like, a double chin and I'm smiling and, like, holding, like, a Ben and Jerry's ice cream. And I'm like, no, that's not how I want to look. <laughs> I have that's this not thing. What I fucking look like. No, <sighs> don't post it. But yeah. you're like, oh, that's because that's how you see me all the time. Do you but, remember the time we got in a fight wanna, at Walden Pond look, about like, that? Cool and mysterious, you know. Do you remember the time we got in a fight at Walden Pond because you wanted me to take a picture of you where you were sitting on a wall and you had your head down and you were holding the brim of your hat, and I was like, your face isn't in the photo, and you're like, babe, I know. I did not call you babe. All right. <laughs> Maybe maybe I got I that did, part wrong. I definitely didn't say babe. All right, then you said, dude, I know. <laughs> You're like, take the picture. I don't want my face in it. And I was like, but I can't see you. And you were yeah, like, you I were... don't. <sighs> Jesus Christ. What? Right, now I'm mad. <laughs> Walden Pond. <laughs> oh Whatever. my God. I actually, the episode that I listened to recently was us on the way back from Walden Pond. Oh, that's so sweet. I miss those days. You weren't being very sweet. Was I being an asshole? Really? No, we were joking. But um, oh. you were fake fighting with me and saying that um, it was your idea to go to Walden Pond and I was being an asshole. And apparently I dragged you to Walden Pond and you didn't oh. want to go and you were complaining until you got in the water. Dude, do you know what else I did on the way there that I felt so bad about? What? Um, I don't even remember us fighting we at Walden Pond. were driving through an intersection, like really slow. It was like a really small intersection. Yeah. And there were these young kids on scooters on the sidewalk. And they were like pro scooters. They weren't yeah. like, right. Like they were. Like, oh, trick, I remember they were this. Like trick scooters. So I thought they were scooter kids. And I yelled out the window. I was like, "Do a, do a tail whip!" And the kid just was like meekly and sadly like, "I can't do that." He's like, "I don't know how." I don't know how to do tail whip. <laughs> and he like looked like I. I think he thought I was like fucking with him or like yeah. trying to punk him out. But I just thought it'd be funny if if he just, did one. If he did a tail whip, and I would have been like, "Fuck oh, yeah!" Like I don't know. You do an ollie to him. But, no, 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 do an ollie's fucking stupid because an ollie isn't a trick. That's dumb, to yell do an ollie. But do a kickflip, if someone yells do a kickflip out their window, out the window of their car at you while you're skateboarding, it's usually annoying. But if you do a kickflip, it's so badass. <laughs> and they're like, yeah! Like, it's He's like, like I don't you're know. like the fucking man if you do the kickflip, you know. I don't know. It's whatever. I like do an ollie because half the time when you see a kid on a skateboard, like, if it's not like an adult. If it's an adult on a skateboard, they know how to ollie. But if it's a kid on a skateboard, they might not know how to ollie. Mm. I've said that to friends before who I knew didn't know how to ollie, and I thought it was funny. Yeah. I actually am anti-ollie gatekeeping of skateboarding. Any skate skaters in the audience? What's ollie to... gatekeeping? Well, it's a phrase that I just made up. But there's <laughs> a lot of people that don't think they're valid because they can't ollie. Oh. And so they like don't want to vibe with other people that skate. And that sucks because they should be completely able to vibe with everybody. I think I'm missing some context here because it's not that um, I think that you're an idiot if you can't ollie. I just don't know how to do anything. So I just I thought it was you're, funny to say that. It's different when you're a, just a person <laughs> saying that. But for if a skateboarder is like, you know, flexing on somebody or disregards somebody because they can't ollie and they just like to carve around or like skate bolts or something. Yeah. That's whack. And that there's whack. a lot of people that aren't doing pop tricks or something or ollieing that think that people are going to treat them like that. And that's stupid as fuck. Should we go into target with our tiny microphones? Honestly, fuck that. Let's just wrap this up. This is a fun recording. It is, this is a good episode. Are we, you mad at me still? a lot of ground. No, but I was very mad at you earlier. Yeah. Cause we weren't we'll recording get into that next time. We got into it earlier. I already talked about it. Yeah, I guess so. And I was like, was that on the patron episode or was that on this one? That's going to be tricky, and we're not sure what podcast we said what on. Oh, That's going to start happening. But that'll be a good ad every episode. We're going to have to start... Oh, fuck. Actually, let's talk about 
that's boring business. We'll talk about that off air. Stop getting mad at me about the podcast. Don't do the stressy oh, right, thing. Right, right, you just right, have right, to right. pee. Relax. I have to pee so bad. Right yeah, now. that's all that's wrong. Well, I'm not mad at you right now. But you did the thing where you went, oh, and you started no, no, bouncing I was going to make a point, but it was like not really like a podcast point. It was more of a... A it meta? Was, it, was a, it was a back room con- uh, idea. Okay. Anyway. All right. It was a it was a control room situation. It's pretty early right now. Do you think that we yeah, have we the guts like... to make another patron episode on the Hold way on. home? Let's let's wrap this up. I want to shut this off. <laughs> get the fuck out of here, listeners! All right, get the fuck out of here. Subscribe to the Patreon <laughs> if it's launched. We, I don't know if it's launched yet. Get the fuck out! Bye, and give me bye, your money. Bye, 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 bye. I'm shutting it off. Okay. Bye. Bye. Boston Art Podcast is an independent DIY production by Brian Huntress and Theodora Earthworms. The information contained in this episode represents the views and opinions of the original creators or our guests, and does not represent any institution, organization, or business. Find us on Instagram at Boston Art Podcast, and tune in for a new episode every Friday. Thank you for listening.